The Aging in Place project is a five-year research program funded by the Levy Hume Trust in the UK. It focuses on two of the most important trends facing contemporary societies. Population aging on the one hand and urbanisation on the other. And understanding the interaction between those two developments is especially important because more than half of the world's population is now aging in urban areas. Yet a key issue is that cities are very much imagined and structured with a younger working age demographic in mind. And older people are typically not incorporated into mainstream thinking and planning around cities. As well as more older people, many cities have also become increasingly diverse and unequal. And this presents a number of challenges to the current policy ideal of aging in place, or the idea of supporting people to age at home in their own community of choice. An important response to this ideal of aging in place has come from the World Health Organization, who developed a model of the age-friendly city to create supportive urban environments as people age through interventions in the physical environment, such as housing, transportation, outdoor spaces, as well as the social environment. For example, by promoting opportunities for civic and social participation. And building on this work, the World Health Organization developed the Global Network of Age-Friendly Cities and Communities in 2010. And today, this now brings together over 1,100 cities and communities across the world that are committed to adapting their structures and services to support their ageing populations. Yet despite the rapid expansion of the network, its theoretical and its scientific grounding hasn't been adequately established. And there have been very few attempts to evaluate age-friendly initiatives. The research is embedded in a critical gerontology framework and this refers to our commitment not just to understand the inequalities that shape the ageing process but also to challenge them by involving older people and working collaboratively with different stakeholder groups as active participants in the research process. The key question that drives us is how can we adapt urban environments to the changing needs of people as they grow old? The project which started in 2021 has four objectives and these will now be explained in more detail by the members of the team. The first objective focuses on developing theoretical innovation in our understanding of ageing in cities. We do this through bringing together different disciplinary perspectives that are relevant to urban ageing, but that have so far remained largely disconnected. We bring together insights from social gerontology, the study of ageing, with theories on urban change coming from sociology, human geography and architecture. For example, we use theories around social justice from sociology and human geography to bring new insights to how architecture and urban design think about age-friendly cities. The second objective of the project is to compare seven cities who are actively prioritising age-friendly policies and initiatives. The cities have been purposely selected to reflect diversity in geographical location, socio-economic characteristics, ethnicity and patterns of migration. Some cities have a lot of older people, but slow overall population growth. This includes Akita in Japan and Bilbao in Spain. Other cities have a proportionally small older population. They are young cities, but they are aging rapidly. For us, that is Brno in the Czech Republic and Quebec in Canada. And finally, some cities are both young and slow growing. In our project, these cities are represented by Manchester, 
Brussels in Belgium and Oslo in Norway. Across these cities, the section of the population that is over 65 years old ranges from less than 10% in Manchester to about a third in Akita. We are using a mixed methods design to integrate the statistical demographic characteristics with qualitative analysis of city-specific age-friendly policies and initiatives. We are exploring how different types of environments influence the experience of ageing in place. The integrated findings will be used to advance theoretical perspectives on population ageing and urban change. The third research objective examines three cities that demonstrate the impact of urban and demographic change in different ways. Manchester, facing challenges from gentrification, Akita, characterised by accelerated ageing, and Brussels, as an example of diversity and international migration. We use locality-based studies using ethnographic methods to explore how older people are both included and excluded from urban renewal discourse in these three cities. We are using participant observation methods in the study locations to gain a detailed understanding of the ways in which different age groups use, participate and interact in public space and how this relates to gender, social class and ethnicity. Using a co-production approach, we are also training a diverse group of older people to become involved as co-researchers in designing and shaping the research with a particular focus on working with older people from marginalised groups. The project is unique in examining not only the ways in which urban environments can exclude older people, but also their potential for inclusion through the cultural, economic and social resources that cities represent. The fourth objective is to develop a framework and tools for evaluating age-friendly programmes. A framework that can be flexibly adapted to local contexts. At this final stage of the project, we will be integrating the findings from the previous stages and creating an accessible toolkit so that others can apply the knowledge we have collectively gained. The Manchester Urban Ageing Research Group has a strong history of developing and implementing co-production techniques. In particular, we have worked alongside older people as co-researchers in projects that have aimed to understand the barriers and facilitators to increasing the age friendliness of urban neighbourhoods. The Aging in Place project builds on our experience of co-production and develops an innovative approach to working with co-researchers. Through cooperation between older people, community organisations, local and regional government, and research institutions, we are working across national borders and building co-production into all stages of the project. At the final stage of the project, our collective knowledge and learning will be built into the evaluation framework for age-friendly programmes. The gentleman kissed my hands and he said no one has ever asked him his opinions before. And that was, you know, that really touched me. It's fascinating what people tell you. And, and some of the people that, that we interviewed, we found were in dire distress and hadn't been able to tell anybody. There are four key contributions of this research. The first is linked to the development of pioneering co-production methods with partners across national borders. Secondly, the study provides more robust evidence for policy making on how to support the experience of ageing in place for marginalised groups of older people. Thirdly, it provides opportunities for exchanging knowledge and sharing good practices on developing age-friendly cities across different locations. And finally, our project will be vital in supporting the creation of more inclusive and more just cities that are sustainable for current and future generations. Collaborating with a diverse range of people and organisations who have an interest in urban ageing is at the centre of this project. So if you'd be interested in speaking to us about our work 
would like to find out more, please get in touch and we look forward to hearing from you.